Hey y'all. So everyone is talking about electroculture these days. It's one of those things that resurfaces every decade or so. Um, I read about it years ago, but uh, dismissed it like something up there with putting raw onions in a room when you're sick or planting a strawberry in a pot to a whole strawberry in a pot to grow strawberries. You know, those things don't work. So you just kind of hear about it and go, yeah, whatever. That's kind of how I've always thought of electroculture. I am one of the biggest skeptics you will meet when it comes to new fads. Um, but so many people have been talking about electroculture that I decided that I would investigate it um, a little more deeply to see if I could figure out what all the commotion is about. Um, especially since one of the miracle claims is that it helps eliminate pests without the use of pesticides which are really bad, bad here this year. We're having a horrific year for the roly polies or pill bugs, whatever you want to call them. Um, even though we had a really mild winter in Texas. So anything that helps get rid of these pests, I'm all in for. Now the videos that I watch on channels that I follow all use copper wiring and various gauges. Um, that they made into these little coil antennas. Um, some used, put it on a stick, some put it on dowel rods, and some just did little coils. They're, uh, and then they stuck them in the plant, uh, ground in their plants. No one really specified what gauge copper to use, so that didn't seem to matter as far as everything. There didn't seem to be a general consensus on the right or wrong way to do it. And um, all of these people had follow-up vi videos showing luscious gardens, um, so it got my attention. So the question is, uh, does it work? Does it really work or is it just some fictional hocus pocus? So I started my research, which took me down this long, um, Google rabbit hole that quite quite frankly exhausted me and I wasn't really sure that I um, cared enough to spend uh, the hours upon hours that I did end up spending researching this subject um, but that's how my mind works and if I want to know about something about something I just start googling and looking at books and you know scientific research papers and I just go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. So that's kind of how I um, how I did it with this subject, with the electroculture subject. Um, and I'm going to share some of that with y'all today. So let's start with the basics. The, the general consensus seems to be um, that the copper coils act as antennas. I have chickens running all around me. That the copper antennas act um, as the copper coils act as antennas which harness the energy that's in the atmosphere already and that it helps to direct that energy down into the ground and stimulates root, root growth and um, eliminates the need for pesticides fertilizers and other amendments now that's a huge claim that is backed up by someone called Matt um, Roski, I think is how you pronounce it, who was the co-founder of something called Cultivate Elevate. I found a website and a YouTube channel for him and watched several of his videos on the subject. Um, I don't know anything about him other than the fact that he seems to be one of the louder voices on the subject and seems to have the most videos on the subject. I'm not saying that he's right or he's wrong. Um, I'm just telling you what he claims. Now, this isn't the first time that copper has been touted as a miracle worker. Um, I have had arthritis my entire life, which is a part of having lupus, which I have. 
and there has been a large market for copper bracelets that are supposed to help with stiff joints and arthritis pain that I have tried, but I didn't like the, the cuff, not, um, cuff tight style bracelet. So I just kind of put that back in a drawer and never wore it again. Whether it worked or not, I can't really say. I don't really think it did. Um, I think if it had worked that I would have continued to wear it. But anyway, um, copper pots and pans are another large market where they say that um, they can benefit our digestive system and they can um, increase your metabolism and help detox your system through the magic of copper. Um, I've never owned copper pots and pans, so I really can't comment on that one. Now, copper is also used in the uh, biomedical field for many different medical reasons, um, medical applications, I should say. They say it is antimicrobial and antifungal, um, which is important in the medical field. So we know copper is good for a lot of different applications, but is it good for the garden is the question. Now, when I first started my research, I simply Googled what is electroculture. That took me to many articles uh, about something that seemed to be quite a bit different than what people are doing today with these copper rods and coils. Um, because historically speaking, Electroculture seemed to actually involve electricity. The electroculture experiments that I read about um, had the, the ones that used actual electricity had proven scientific results, supposedly. Results that people like Kevin at Epic Gardening says don't exist in the modern modern version with just using the coils and the dowels. So many respected gardeners say it's all pseudoscience and that it isn't to be trusted, um, but there seems to be evidence going back to at least the 1700s that suggests that it may be more legit than some people think. At least where the version of electroculture exists that does involve electricity. I don't know about just the coils, but the part that involved electricity supposedly um, supposedly does have proven results. So should we be attaching batteries to these coils? That's, that's a question I have. And to be honest, I don't know. You can usually follow the money trail to find out who benefits from some of these supposed uh, snake oil claims, but I did a lot of research and I had a hard time linking, linking the copper industry with uh, to anything even remotely pushing this idea onto gardeners. So other than uh, you know, a book or two, and maybe some Facebook posts or some YouTube channel um, subscribers. It's it or I've actually there were some Etsy people that sell the coils pre-made, but I've had a hard time finding um, a financial reason other than I guess you know you could be doing the the talk show circuit I guess if you become the expert on electroculture, but I have. Uh, haven't really found a link to anything sub substantial. There's no Lowe's or Home Depot or Amazon out there pushing electroculture, for example. So it just seems to be the latest gardening fad that may or may not be grounded in any real science um, that somehow has deviated from the original plan that involved electricity. And it seeks to convince us that copper can harness energy from thin air deposited by our plants um, where it makes our lives easier and cheaper and supposedly better for the environment. 
so what do I intend to do with all of my newfound knowledge where electroculture is concerned? Am I a believer now or am I still a skeptic? Well, I'm still a skeptic, but for $20 worth of copper, I figured I'll give it a try. I mean, why not? Worst case scenario is I'm out $20 and I have some cute little curly Q coils in my garden for dragonflies to land on. What I do know is that it won't hurt to try it. It won't hurt my garden, even if it doesn't help my garden. Um, so if it doesn't work, then oh well. At least I gave it a try rather than let other people discourage me from experimenting and trying something new. Ironically, sorry, there's a plane going over. I did my junior high science fair project on what color do plants prefer. Was it, I think it was blue, red, and green cellophane, cellophane that I used. And I had the beans in a cup, three different ones. And I tried to, you know, I had the same amount of light but this one had cellophane on it and this one had so you know each one had cellophane so the light that shone through there was a different color for each plant so my experiment was to see experiment was to see which what which color plants preferred and if I remember correctly they preferred the green I know it wasn't the red I can't remember but anyway that was 40 years ago and I've lived a lot since then um, but the, the experiment itself was fun and um, that much I remember. So there's nothing wrong with experimenting with plants. It, it, you know, you might learn something. Um, that was when I wasn't jaded by the sham wow and the Floby experience. If you remember those products on TV. Um, now I had nothing to gain by do, doing that experiment other than a good or bad grade and a little ribbon. I also have nothing to gain now by doing this video. I'm not trying to convince you to try electroculture or not try electroculture. I'm really unbiased where this is concerned. But when did we stop encouraging people to experiment and try new things just because something hasn't been proven yet by someone with a diploma? Um, that to me just it just doesn't sit right with me. Um, we wouldn't have a lot of things today if we relied on people with diplomas to have a peer-reviewed study on everything that we believed in. You know, Bill Gates didn't have a diploma when he created um, basically his first software in a garage. You know, he was a Harvard dropout. So I'm not gonna, I don't have to rely on a peer-reviewed study to know whether or not this works or not. I can try it in my own garden for about 20 bucks and that's that. So I ordered some, some copper off of Amazon. I made sure I didn't buy the aluminum jewelry stuff that's just copper colored. I ordered actual copper. And I will do a follow-up video showing you how we're going to make the little spiral coils we will go over all of the do's and don'ts and little rules that I have found from the various videos and everything that I, you know, all my research. Uh, many of which conflict with each other, of course. There's a cat behind me. But that's all a part of uh, the fun is uh, finding out what works best for you in your garden. Oh my goodness. The cat just sprayed the tree. Um, so let us know down below if you've tried this and if you feel like it's a, uh, a hoax or not. It was a hoax the right word. It would let us know if you feel like it worked in your garden, if you had any success with it, or if you didn't have any success with it. We would like to know. We're curious. Um, I hope you guys have a very good week. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And I have an announcement. 
for those of y'all still watching. I promised that when we got to 1,200 subscribers that we would do a giveaway. So down below, I want you... So if you want to be entered into our 1,200 subscriber giveaway, down below, you can leave whatever comment that you want, but I want you to comment how about cat since he decided to spray the bush behind me. So comment down below something about the cat and you will be entered into our giveaway, which I will announce in two weeks from the day that this video goes live. So good luck to all you guys on our giveaway.